Judah, your brothers shall praise you. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's son shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's cub. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He stooped down, he crouched as a lion, and as a lioness, who dares rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet until tribute comes to him, and to him shall be the obedience of the peoples. Revelation 5, 5, then what? I go from beginning to the end. Are you with me in this place tonight? Then one of the elders said to me, stop weeping. Look, the mighty lion of Judah's tribe, the root of David, he has conquered. He is the worthy one who can open the scroll. There is a sound that is getting ready to be released in this earth. There is a sound that is getting ready to be re released through the ecclesia. Hear me. It is terrifyingly holy. But it is also infinitely merciful. This sound is in the lineage of Jesus Christ himself. This sound partners with the one who is feared, the one whose kingdom is eternal, the one to whom all nations owe obedience, the one whose scepter shall never depart from him. This is the sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah. I have leaned into the sound of heaven. For this house and for this nation. And I heard the Holy Spirit say in your seven fresh start church, walk with the lion. It is no accident that it was the one named Judah, which we know means praise. The one named Judah that was blessed by his father Jacob with the blessing that prophesied the eventual eternal kingdom of Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. It is by no accident that over the last six years, this house has gotten a revelation of their praise, of their shout, and of their sound. Hear me in this place tonight, fresh start. It has been for such a time as this. Every shout released, every high praise released, every wall torn down, every threshold crossed. It has been for such a time as this. And I have asked the Lord, what does your church need to hear? They say here in this hour. And he said, in order to hear the fierce, sovereign, majestic, and mighty sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah, hear me, there must first be a confrontation of the counterfeit. That's why I asked, are you ready for this tonight? Are you ready for this tonight? Every hand lifted in the air right now. We are hidden in the shadow of Shaddai. And we bind our hearts in this place together. And we say with one voice and with one sound, we speak to this principality that is hiding behind the counterfeit sound. And we say, this is the night that you are exposed. Are you ready for this tonight? 
You can be seated if you want to. Come on, come on. Give the Lord a praise as you walk back to your seat. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Are you ready to lean into this? Are you ready to lean into year seven, the sound of heaven in year seven? Come on. The word counterfeit means made in an exact imitation of something, listen, valuable or important with the intention, I said with the intention to deceive or to defraud. It's time to pay the price in order to carry the real thing. I said it's time to pay the price in order to carry the real thing. I have spoken briefly on this sound before, the counterfeit sound. Last time I had the honor of preaching in this pulpit, I spoke very, very briefly on it. But as I leaned into the sound of year seven, I heard the Lord say, listen, confront and expose the prophets of Baal and tear down the high places first. He said first, and then he said then, release the sound. So can we do that for a few minutes in this place tonight? Please go with me as I bring confrontation to the counterfeit. What some may call just another style, a different vibe, or a more po polished sound in the American church has actually become a blatant infusion of mixture from hell itself to stifle, silence, and deem unnecessary the fierce and victorious sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the American church, hear me, hear me, Judah has left her post. Not in this house. She has abandoned her sound. She has abandoned her authority. She has traded consecration for consumerism. Fight for fame, push for passivity, righteousness for rank, breakthrough for bondage, strength for sentimentalism, and the sovereign sound of heaven for the hollow sound of, re of relevance. But I say, not in this house. We have paid the price to carry the real thing. Since 2015, we have paid the price to carry the real thing. And Rest our church. I say in year seven, we walk with the lion. In this house, we abolish consumerism and we carry consecration. We lay down fame and we pick up the fight. We challenge passivity and we release provocation. I say we challenge passivity and we release provocation. We deny rank and hunger and we thirst for righteousness. We dismantle bondage and we birth breakthrough. We sound the alarm on sentimentalism and we release strength and authority and we release one sound and one sound only and that is the sovereign sound of heaven and that sound drives out and, and, uh, that sound drives out and silences the hollow sound of relevance. In year seven, we walk with the lion. Let the sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah be released. This counterfeit sound has convinced pastors, worship leaders, and worshipers across this nation that surface sentimental worship is not only the key to success, but a passport to promotion into the false reality of relevance, rank, and affirmation. The counterfeit sound has tied the tongue and bound the sound of the Davidic church. It has silenced the high and holy praises of God's people. And it has replaced it with haughty, arrogant courses of gratification. I 
I'm confronting it right now. This counterfeit sound comforts principalities instead of confronting them. This is truly the sound of the apostate church. It is so far from the original intention of heaven that it abandons all biblical intention of the purpose and the power of Davidic praise in worship. It may sound good, but it does not set the captive free. Listen to me, it keeps you bound so it can feed your ego and soothe your demons. This sound may look and sound polished, but it is full of mixture. It is gray. It is fluid. It is gray. It is fluid. It will claim to bow to Jesus on one knee while bowing to the rhythm of the culture on the other. And in the secret, its allegiance is not to God Almighty. It is to another. All the while... The American church has championed this sound. It has promoted it. It has placated to it. The church uh, has even filled stadiums with thousands and thousands of broken and hurt and bound people and it still has not given them the fullness of the sound of heaven but only the counterfeit and hear my voice in this place tonight they will be held accountable for that The church has swung wide open the doors to the sound of compromise in the desecration of the temple. And because of this, there are worshipers across this nation that not only think that there is not more, but have absolutely no need for more. The church has taken that which is holy and it has put it in the hands of counterfeit carriers. But tonight, we confront the counterfeit and we release the sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Are you ready in this place tonight? Can I be bold? Obviously. And say, that I believe the sound of the current American church is beginning to mirror that which is the story of the original worship leader in the heavens. This is weighty. Lucifer became so impressed with his own beauty with his own intelligence and with his own power and position that he began to desire for himself the honor and the glory that belong to God and God alone. Ezekiel 28 says this. This is long. Follow me. Thus says the Lord God, you were the signet of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty you were in Eden the garden of God every precious stone was your covering sardius topaz and diamond barrel onyx jasper sapphire emerald and carbuncle and crafted in gold were your settings and your engravings on the day that you were created they were prepared you were an anointed guardian cherub I placed you you were on the holy mountain of God in the midst of the stones of fire you walked. You were blameless in your ways from the day you were created till unrighteousness was found in you. Mixture. In the abundance of your trade, you were filled with violence in your midst and you sinned. So I cast you as a profane thing from the mountain of God and I destroyed you, O guardian cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was proud because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of splendor. I cast you to the ground. 
This is the foundation of the counterfeit sound. Now, this did not mean that Satan had no further, hear me, access to heaven. Some scriptures indicate that Satan maintained this access even after his fall. Listen, but however, scripture does clearly state that although Satan had access to heaven, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. He was absolutely and completely cast out of God's heavenly government and his place of authority. Why the attack on the authoritative sound of heaven being released in this earth today? Why the criticism of confrontational worship and leaders that establish the kingdom and the government of heaven? Because Satan does not want you to have access to something that he lost the keys to. Because of Satan's desire for mixture, listen to me, he forfeits his access to authority. Little do these counterfeit carriers in this earth today realize it is that when they speak against the confrontational governmental Davidic sound they are actually aligning with Satan's desire for mixture and as the ecclesia we have the authority that Satan traded for false significance he hates us he hates the sound that we were created to make because he can't make it anymore Hear me, church, there is one sound. I said one sound that Satan cannot replicate or forge, and that is the governing, authoritative, establishing, and overcoming sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah. Because it is the sound of the lion that crushes the head of the enemy and prepares the way of the Lord. This is why Satan has created, I said he's created, championed, and birthed this weak, spineless, sleepy sound of compromise that is being promoted in the church today. You should know by now I'm not talking about secular music. I'm talking about the sound that has seeped its way into the ecclesia, into the church. Listen, you hear me right now, and I'm probably gonna get some hate mail for this. But your microphone stands that you stand behind and your stools that you sit on, that is not a style, but that is a stronghold. That is blatant rebellion against the Davidic sound of heaven. And I say enough is enough. Away go sleeper. The enemy knows that if he can get the church comfortable, 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 in this complacent sound of mixture, then she will forget what she really has access to, which is the kingdom and the government of heaven. This is why, church, we must have eyes to see and ears to hear. Eyes to see and ears to hear in this hour. John 16, 13 through 15 says, but when the truth giving spirit comes, he will unveil the reality of every truth. 
within you. He will not speak on his own, but only, talking about the Holy Spirit, but only what he hears from the Father. He will then reveal prophetically to you what is to come. He will glorify me on this earth, for he will receive from me what is mine and reveal it to you. Everything that belongs to the Father belongs to me. That's why I say that the divine encourager will receive what is mine and reveal it to you. So we must ask to hear the conversations between the Father and the Son. The Father and the Son. Oh Lord, give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear in this hour. Then what we do is we establish those conversations that we hear between the Father and the Son on earth as you hear it in heaven. Roland Wharton says it like this. God gives authority to those who think the way he thinks and want what he wants. God gives authority to those that think the way he thinks and want what he wants. We must unplug from the mainstream counterfeit conformers, come on church, and cry out for a consecrated connection to heaven. This is real, this is real, this is real. We are fighting a real principality in the counterfeit sound. Will you hear me in this place tonight? We are fighting a real principality in the counterfeit sound. There is a reason when the enemy is trying to silence the governmental, apostolic, authoritative sound of the ecclesia. We're going to tear it down tonight. Now I'm going to keep it in the family because I found an article actually wasn't looking for it <laughs> and I just stumbled across it did you know that there is such thing as progressive Christian worship music just as there is the progressive church <clears throat> I'm going to expose this right now And in the name of Jesus, this demon that wrote this ridiculous article is going to hear the sound of my voice and is going to hear the sound of your voice. And he's going to have to take a knee. I said he's going to have to take a knee. I said he's going to have to take a knee. Enough is enough. Could I get a little bit? Did you just give me more? I need a little bit more. Progressive Christian worship. I'm reading the article right now. Trust me, none of these words will be my words. Progressive Christian worship music refers to music with lyrics, which has been created to be sung in the context of worship, obviously, by groups of Christians whose biblically based faith has led them to embrace a more progressive worldview. Of course, Christians who do not consider themselves to be progressive are also welcome to sing and enjoy this music. Listen to this. And chances are they won't even know that the song that they're singing is progressive by our definition. Wow, they're singing it. Eyes to see, ears to hear. Progressive Christian worship music reflects an emphasis on praise, justice, and the fullness of the human experience. Inclusive language, whenever possible, pronouns for both God and humans will be gender neutral or inclusive. For example, instead of using the word mankind, the word humankind might be used. Instead of always referring to God as he or father, images such as source of love might be used. Or God might be referred to as father in one verse and then as mother in the next. The focus will always be more on grace than law. 
and themes of mercy, compassion, forgiveness, inclusion, acceptance, tolerance, and extravagant welcome will always be sensual. Pay attention. <laughs> I hear these songs every day. Before the, legislative, before the legislative album clicks on and there's a little radio station playing. I hear these songs. Do you hear them? There is little emphasis on things like Jesus paying the price for our sins or being saved from hell and going to heaven in progressive Christian worship music. Many progressive Christians are questioning if not rejecting traditional doctrines such as substitutionary atonement and blood sacrifice. So you won't find these doctrinal emphasis much in progressive Christian worship music either. Another example of language that may not be communicating as effectively as it once did, listen to this is royal language. Referring to God as king or to Jesus as prince, etc. This is tricky stuff, the demon said, because this language is all over scripture. And, and some of the most popular praise and worship songs, they still use it. Majesty, for example. Again, there's no need to be rigid or legalistic about any of this. But the simple truth is that the most modern nations don't even have kings anymore. And those that do are largely symbolic. And as for someone who hasn't, this is the demon, grown up in church, even a concept such as the kingdom of God can be increasingly difficult to relate to. Or perhaps there's another way of referring to God's kingdom that might somehow get through to modern listeners more effectively. So progressive Christian worship music songwriters are seeking new ways to refer to God's kingdom. Some might suggest God's dream for example. I have something to say to this principality that is hiding behind progressive Christian worship. I say, hear the word of the Lord. He is called faithful and true and in righteousness, he judges and he wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire and on his head are many crowns and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God. From his mouth comes a sharp sword so that with it he may strike down the nations and he will rule them with the rod of iron and he treads the winepress ah, of the fierce wrath of God, the almighty and on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written king kings and lord of lord one more and he has now been given the greatest of all names the authority of the name of jesus causes every knee to bow in reverence everything and everyone will one day submit to this name in the heavenly realm in the earthly realm and in the demonic realm every tongue will proclaim in every language jesus is lord yahweh i say take a knee he is royalty and he has all authority i say he is royalty and he has all authority I'll say it again, Satan hates the authority and the royalty and the kingship of Jesus Christ. He does not want you to have access to something that he has lost the keys to. So in your seven fresh start church, we walk with a lion. We are not loud just to be loud, 
but we will release a sound that establishes the kingdom of heaven and the lordship of Jesus Christ in this nation and in the nations. The sound of the mighty lion of the tribe of Judah. And if the sound of my voice and the sound of these people are irritating you right now, I have news for you that the enemy of the sound of authority is pride and perversion. So I say, check your heart, take a knee, get right, because here comes a lion of the tribe of Judah. I have no idea what time I came up here. Fine. Hear me, hear me, hear me. I'm getting ready to read to you a download that the Holy Spirit gave me. I believe this is the word of the Lord. This is the prophetic word of the Lord for this hour, for the ecclesia. I believe there is coming a collision of two sounds. The sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah and the counterfeit sound, one against the other. For too long there has been mixture, there has been compromise, there has been self-exaltation and competition. One sound has been championed while the other has been criticized. One displayed while the other dismissed, all in the name of false significance. There is coming a collision of two sounds. And in that day, it will be as King Nebuchadnezzar and the three Hebrew boys. Choose this day who you will serve. The idol of gold or the one true living God. Church of America, you will no longer be allowed to serve two masters. This will cause a great rift in the church. Hear me, this is from heaven. As one sound has been criticized for its volume, tenacity, and confrontation, and the other has been championed for its perfection and its polished beauty, all the while carrying a hidden attraction to the profane. There will be a line drawn and there will be two sides. Which side, church, will you be found on? The wide road or the road called narrow? The lion walks on the road called narrow. And as the counterfeit sound begins to be exposed, so goes the progressive seeker church. They are one in the same. For the very foundation of this progressive church has been built on its own beauty, its own intelligence, and its own power. This church has chosen to forfeit access to authority for consumerism, fame, passivity, rank, and sentimentalism. There is coming a collision of two sounds, and the lion of the tribe of Judah is getting ready to shake everything that can be shaken. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. I'll say it again, in order to hear, come on, the fierce, sovereign sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah, there had to be confrontation of the counterfeit. Are you ready? Go with me tonight for a few minutes on what I'm calling the journey of the cry. We are getting ready to enter into year seven. We have written 14 songs in six years, which probably actually isn't a lot. <clears throat> but there's a reason for that. Because we have never and will never write a song just to write a song. We write songs that align with the cry of the house and the sound of heaven. No more, no less. So if you've been here with us from the beginning, take a walk down memory lane. If you've jumped in the middle of this, I hope you hear in a very short amount of time, my heart, our heart, behind every single song that we have written that has led us to this position that we are in today as we walk into year seven with the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
Revival broke out in 2015. In 2016, we wrote our first song called Desperate. This was the first song we had ever written. This song was written from a place of desperation. Our cry was increasing, and this was an overflow of that. Our cry was a part of birthing revival, and this is the cry that will sustain revival. It is the cry of desperation. In 2017, we wrote, we, wrote, we won't settle. I believe this song drew a line in the sand. This was and is our anthem. We made our declaration of faith that not only is there more, but we won't stop until we see it, until we hear it, and until we step into it. Come to find out. This song was just the beginning of songs that would challenge the mindset of the religious. I believe this is when we stepped into the mantle of making religion mad with our sound. I believe this song broke open and has kept open the heavens over Fresh Start Church. We won't settle. In 2018, we wrote Breaking In. The Lord began to give us a revelation of the sounds and the songs of heaven, the power and the sovereignty of his sound, that on that day when they were all gathered together in one room, there was a sound released directly from heaven, and it was a sound the earth had been groaning for, a sound that the desperate pulled down from heaven, a sound that didn't just knock on the door, but broke in like a mighty rushing wind, tearing down every stronghold and establishing the kingdom and his sound on this earth. This is why we cry for a breaking in. In 2018, we wrote Shake This Place. This song is our high praise anthem. It seals and it honors what the Lord has already done in our house while swinging wide the gates to welcome him in to do more. I said more. We praise him for the miracles. We praise him, but we won't stop because we want more. Because every time we gather, we long for this house to be shaken with the power and the glory of heaven. In 2018, we wrote Send the Rain. This song was written as an echo to Pastor Kim's message, Rain Over Regions. There must be a people that know how to make it rain over regions. And with this song, we establish that we are the people who will call on his rain. He has always wanted there to be rain over regions of this earth. And we made a declaration that we will call on the wells to be broken open. We will stand between heaven and earth. And fresh start, we will always ask for rain in the time of rain. In 2019, we wrote Victory Cry. The revelation of the war courts. I believe this song shifted us into a realm of warfare worship. This became a song of intercession. There is power in the simplicity of this song. It releases the power of God's word and it establishes his sovereignty. Let God arise and every enemy be scattered. In 2019, we wrote Losing Control and Jesus Reigns. Those are two fast songs. There had been and still is a severe drought of high praise songs being released in the American church. So we started writing. Bringing the church into the revelation of the mighty rushing river of life and the kingship of Jesus Christ through high praise and declaration. Because in order to yield to the river, you must lose control. And because of his sovereignty, there is no chain that he cannot break. In 2019, we also wrote, that was a good year, y'all. That was a good one. We wrote a lot of songs. We also wrote Answered by Fire and Realms of Glory. Answered by Fire pulled us into a place of consecration. Realms of Glory released us into the unseen, the unheard, and the unknown. Answered by Fire was a response to the tug of repentance and called to be a people of sacrifice, set apart without any other idols or lovers for the sake of stewarding the fire of God. Realms of Glory was an echo of past. Sir Kim's
his message unceasing expectation. This song moved us into a posture of childlike faith, wide-eyed wonder, expectation, and the cry that there are realms of glory that he has prepared for us, and they are to be open. This is the day, this is the day that we enter in to those realms of glory. In 2020, also a wonderful year, we wrote Behold, Legislation, and Pushback. I believe that 2020 brought out the best in Fresh Start Church. We found out what we were really made of. And we found out what we were really made for. And it turns out for a start, we were made for war. We were made for war. We were made for war. This is a year that we fully stepped into our mantle as of apostolic worship. In a year of chaos, exposure, and demonic control and manipulation, we began to call out and expose the enemy for who he really was. Behold, is a strong straight from the book of Revelation that takes you straight to the throne room of God, giving him all blessing, honor, and authority. Because when he is lifted high, everything else must bow. Legislation is our authority as the Ecclesia. We've been given the keys to the kingdom. This is our position. Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. We are the legislative assembly. We gather together. We overturn the decrees of the enemy and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Pushback was our answer to the overreach. Of not only our earthly government, but the ranks of hell that tried to push us around. Silence the church. Tell us not to gather. Take away the power of our sound and weaken us with fear. We say no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We serve the God of angel armies. And with our praise, we're sending confusion into the camp of the enemy. A nation in fear needs a church with a push back praise. This brings us to 2021. It's the last one for now. This year we wrote a song called Dry Bones. This song was written straight from Ezekiel 37. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. You shall live and you shall live again. There is a prophetic declaration into the life, into the destiny of the United States of America. America, we wrote this song for you. The world may see a broken and a fearful nation, But we hear the thunder, we hear the rattling, we hear the sound of awakening, and we see this nation coming back to life. We have paid the price and we have tilled the ground with our cry and with our hunger. And we have paid the price and we have tilled the ground by setting things in order with our legislation and our declaration. And hear me, church, for the last six years, little did we know that we were making way for the rhythm of the lion of the tribe of Judah. I heard the Lord say, Stay close to the lion in year seven. Because it is better to align with the sound and the protection of the lion than to deny his kingship and face his fierceness. I'm going to say that again. 
It is better to align with the sound and the protection of the lion than to deny his kingship and face his fierceness. As you know, we've been singing a line around here. I can hear the rhythm of the lion of the tribe of Judah. We didn't write that. That came from a song written by Misty Edwards called People Get Ready. As I was already in the middle of this message, Stacy sent us a video of Misty Edwards sharing a dream that she had that led her to write this song. I'm going to share that dream with you right now. I paraphrased it a little bit. But as I begin to hear her share this dream, it began to bring confirmation to what the Lord had already been speaking to me about year seven. And it brought revelation to the sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is her dream. I was in a large church full of people. Everyone in the church was really plastic. Everyone was moving very mechanical. It was so fake, counterfeit, that I had to get out of there. She said I had to find something real. Then suddenly, I began to hear this rhythm. Listen, it was the most terrifying rhythm I had ever heard. And this rhythm, she says it like this, was like far away but it was coming from the inside of me at the same time. She said it was like right here, but it was far away. And I started to run to the rhythm of his feet. And I ran through the church and out the door to the rhythm of his feet. And she said, as soon as I got out the door, I saw this huge explosion. She said it was chaos, like Isaiah 24 type stuff, which is chaos. It was war and it was destruction. And everything that could have been shaken was shaking. She said, I was trying to wake up and I couldn't. She said, the atmosphere was code red. Alarms were going off everywhere and this rhythm was getting more and more intense. She said, it was coming from the inside of me and coming from a distance, getting louder and louder. And she said, then I look up and I see the Lord. She said, at that time in my life, listen, this is very important. She said, at that time in my life, I had been meditating on the Song of Solomon, focusing on the bridegroom heart of God. I didn't think of Jesus as the judge. It wasn't in my paradigm. I say, awake, O oh sleeper. I look and I see the Lord and he's moving to the rhythm of this beat. And he was moving like a lion. He was a man, she said, but he was moving like a lion. He had the most intense look on his face. He had a look of zeal and fire in his face. And I knew that he was the one that was shaking everything. He was shaking everything that could be shaken. She looked at him, she looked at the Lord and she said, Lord, I don't understand. What is going on? And the Lord looked at her and he said, zeal for my house has consumed me. Zeal for my house has consumed me. And she said it thundered. And he said it again. Zeal for my house has consumed me. She began to say to him, yes, Lord, but there is no evil in you. There is only kindness in you. I don't understand how you could shake everything like this. Lord, I don't understand, she said, but if this is you, what is this evil? What is evil? Then the Lord pointed to what seemed to be some kind of religious Buddhist type monk, which carried, listen, some kind of aura of safety and peace. Counterfeit, counterfeit, counterfeit. Sentimentalism. It carried this aura of safety and peace, but it was absent of Jesus Christ. And the Lord looked at me as he pointed to that, and he said, woe to those who call good evil and evil good in that day. And blessed are you if you are not offended. She said, Lord, I don't understand everything. But if this is you, what do you need me to do? 
And he looked at her and he said, sing Zion, sing, sing Zion, sing, sound the alarm, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm, blow the trumpet in Zion, for there is coming, these are my words, a great shaking, and for every entrance that the king makes, there is a sound that must precede him. This is the sound that we are entering into tonight. Sing Zion, sing. Hebrews 12, 27 says this. So don't turn a deaf ear to these gracious words. If those who ignored earthly warnings didn't get away with it, what will happen to us if we turn our back on heavenly warnings? His voice that time shook the earth to its foundations. This time, he's told us this quite plainly. He'll also rock the heavens. One last shaking from top to bottom, stem to stern. The phrase one last shaking means a thorough house cleaning, getting rid of all the historical and religious junk so that the unshakable essentials stand clear and uncluttered. I hear the spirit of the Lord in this place tonight. Oh, church, this is our heavenly warning. Oh, American church, this is our heavenly warning. There is coming one last shaking, and it will be from top to bottom. But there is a sound that precedes the shaking. And in order to hear it, we must walk with the lion. Stand to your feet all over this place tonight. The sound of the lion of the tribe of Judah will bring a nation to its knees. It is a governmental sound of warning, warfare, and worship. It makes way for the fierce footsteps of the lion. And it shakes everything in its path, making crooked things straight. The sound brings reckoning reconciliation and redemption. But this sound can only be heard by those with a consecrated connection to heaven and by those who choose to follow in the footsteps of the lion. In year seven, we walk with the lion. Joel two gives us a glimpse into this mighty shaking that is to come. Hear the word of the Lord. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. Indeed, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom. A day of clouds and thick darkness as dawn is spread over the mountains. So there is a great and a mighty people. There has never been anything like it, nor will there be again to the ears of many generations. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like war horses, so they run. With the noise of chariots, they leap about on the tops of mountains like the crackling of a flame of fire, consuming the stubble like a mighty people, drawn up for battle. They run like warriors, they climb the wall like soldiers, and each of them march in line. Nor do they lose their way, they do not crowd each other. Every warrior of them marches in his path, and when they burst through the defenses, they do not break ranks. I said they do not break ranks. 
Some of y'all need to stop taking breaks in this place. I know not everybody's here right now, but some of you revivalists need to stop taking breaks in this place. Before them, the earth quakes, the heavens tremble, the sun and the moon become dark, and the stars lose their brightness. The Lord utters his voice before his army. His camp is indeed very great, for mighty is one who carries out his word. The day of the Lord is indeed great and very awesome, and who can endure it? Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning tear your heart and not merely your garments now return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and compassionate slow to anger abounding in mercy and relenting of catastrophe and who knows he might turn and he might relent and leave a blessing behind him but it says blow the trumpet in Zion Consecrate a fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the nursing infants. Have the groom come out of his room and the bride out of her bridal chamber. Let the priest and the Lord minister weep between porch and altar and let them say, Spare your people, O oh Lord, and do not a disgrace with the nations jeering at them why should those among the people say where is their God hear the word of the Lord church the Lord is fashioning an army in this hour of great and mighty people